All right, so before we get into the more complex things, the intricate parts of the Profit V, we're first going to just get a general idea of the layout and the user interface of everything in here, which if you're familiar with other Arturia synths, this is going to be more or less similar with a few differences relating to the specifics of the Profit. But to begin, we have our toolbar on top. This has a number of different things we can do, save presets, new presets, that sort of thing. We saw the resizing and audio settings when you're in standalone. And of course, we'll get back into saving presets and naming things like that once we make a few. But that will then put everything in the browser, which you can open with this button here. And again, we'll circle back around to this sort of stuff, but there's plenty of different ways to find good presets or add your own in. And you can also browse presets with these different ways of sorting through found in the toolbar here, or also cycle through with the arrows. Also on the top, we can choose from the Profit 5, the Profit VS, or the Profit Hybrid, or the combination of the two, just by clicking here. And finally, in the top right, we have the MIDI control, which if we click, we can assign MIDI CC numbers to the various controls of the Profit, Profit VS, and Profit Hybrid parameters. And you'll notice the different colors. The purple ones are unassigned, and the red are assigned to a control already. They have a few automatically assigned and if you're using an Arturia controller, they will be linked and will play nicely there. But if you want to link something or have your MIDI set up to some other controller, you can just click and it will learn whatever knob you turn. And then you'll see that your MIDI controller will have that CC number assigned until you unassign. But all of these different controls, you can set the minimum, maximum values, anything like that, and have your MIDI layout set in this way. Turn off the assign and you can save your controls so that your configuration is accessible and you can have different configurations for different MIDI controllers, anything like that. Or if you're using this in a DAW, you can assign MIDI through the general process of that DAW just as easily too. At the bottom, we have the lower toolbar and this is going to be where we can see a lot of helpful information in the bottom left. There's a little display of the description of our knob that we're hovering over. So anytime you need a little bit more information, the first place to check is down in that bottom left corner, if it's not currently labeled right under the knob too, but sometimes the information can be a little bit more precise at the bottom. You'll also notice that to the right of the mouse pointer, whenever you're hovering over something, you'll have the value so you can easily see what you're looking at and the exact value. If you want to fine tune, you can hold down control or command and click and drag, and then it will fine-tune that control. You can also right-click and drag to do the same thing, fine-tuning, and then double-clicking to reset to a default value. So a fairly standard set of operations as far as controlling knobs and things like that. Continuing through the lower toolbar, we have the sustain mode, and that will define if the sustain will cut or hold the triggered notes. So on normal, you can see that if I press the sustain pedal, we have the release button light up, and that won't work as it will in legacy where if you hold a note and then hold the sustain pedal, you can sustain that note until you let go of the pedal. And on normal mode, the release will either apply to the envelope or not with the sustain pedal. So just a different way that it handles that MIDI input. The polyphony, we can select how many voices we want to be able to be played at a time. On the default patch, we have five, but we can set that to be whatever. But basically, we can just have five different voices playing at a time. And if we play more than that, it will cut off previous notes at a rate defined by the play mode. So you can cut off whatever different ones here. So it just sets which voice will be allocated to the new note played. So if you start playing a number of different notes, eventually you will just lose the ones that you have if it's over your polyphony amount. Next, there's an undo, a redo, and also the history of your undoing and redoing. So you can Recall whatever changes you may have made. You can then set the MIDI channel, and there's a panic button in case your notes are hanging or anything might be working a little bit longer than it should. It will just cut off the sound coming out of the synthesizer. And finally, down here, there's a CPU monitor to tell you just how much processing power you're using for the sound. And that can work its way up, and if something might be glitching out, it's a good idea to see if you're maxing out your CPU or anything like that first. But a lot of the time you should be okay. As far as the two profits in here, the controls are displayed right in front of you. For the Profit 5, it's pretty easy to see everything here. We have our oscillators A and B. 
mixer, filter, all that sort of stuff, as you would see, and we'll get into detail on everything later. The keyboard at the bottom, the pitch and mod wheels, which control parameters, obviously pitch and whatever we link our mod to. For the VS, there's a few more things to look at. There are actual different tabs for different envelopes, different modulation, mixers, wavetables, all the sorts of things that would be related to the vector synthesis, which is a little bit more complex than the subtractive synthesis of the Prophet 5. But nothing to worry about too much. It's going to be pretty simple to get through and understand what's happening with all of this. And then once we have both of those mastered, we'll be able to get into combining them and working with all the different ways that they work with each other and how they can complement each other's strengths and things like that. But like I said, we'll get into all of those specifics later on. For now, though, we did see everything there is as far as just a brief overview. And so when we do jump into some more detail, we'll have at least a little familiarity with how everything around here is laid out. So we'll be ready in the next video to take a look at the Prophet 5 in detail. So I will see you then.